Well, we're heading back up to Lee's Railroad in Corinne, Utah. We were up there before. Oh, my, yeah, it was yeah, cold weather. It was cold and it was quite, quite some time ago. Right. But we put up that neat movie on super realistic operations because mm -hmm. Lee has his own very, very unusual way to, uh, uh, to operate a railroad. What yeah. we didn't really see much of in that last video was his railroad. And so we want to come back and also clarify to some extent the operations on this railroad because it is a little bit confusing. So this time we're just going to run some trains and do some actual operations so you can see just exactly how the thing operates instead of an explanation of how the thing operates. And learn how to operate. And learn how to operate because yeah. it's really, really cool. So check this out. Super real operations on Lee's massive HO railroad in Corinne, Utah. So Lee's railroad's really famous. It's like 50 years old. He's, I know. He started uh, working on it as a teenager. Imagine that in the house he grew up in. That's so cool. But it's, uh, it's well known for its operating system. He does this really unusual paperwork where these little cards that most people use as waybills are just kept in this separate room and those waybills are used on a computer to generate actual railroad paperwork, switch lists, which is exactly how real railroads operate. So these are the switch lists, this is what they look like, and they hang up here for the crews to pick up at the beginning of an operating session. We're handling the paperwork like the prototype handled the paperwork. Because the crew never got a stack of waybills, they got a switch list. This is Mike Boyer. He's one of the guys that routinely operate the railroad. He comes all the way from Wyoming. You know, all these guys travel around 100 miles or more oh, easy, every yeah. week to come run this railroad. It's great. Dale, where we left off last time is we talked about operation. And so today's video, we're going to focus on operation and how the railroad runs. Today, we'll, we'll show you a switch list and the actual train that we're going to switch. We'll run some trains around the railroad. Uh, we'll dispatch. You can watch the dispatcher and how he th throws the signals and lines the switches as we run a train around the railroad. And then we'll come out and make a train up in East Yard and the paperwork to associated with that. And then Mike Boyer, my uh, longtime operator friend, will will then take us through uh, the actual operation of switching out uh, a train at uh, our little town of Jigs. So when we start a session, uh, a lot of times I'll have the jobs posted and listed over here of uh, what they're assigned to for that session, or we may just draw numbers either way. We've drawn numbers for years, and the number is kind of basically your, your seniority, and the number one guy gets to pick first, and sometimes the number 20 guy gets to pick first. We might just break it up a little bit. So the crew's names are over here on the board and we'll go through and go through the bid process or the draw process and then they'll pick what jobs they want and get assigned across here. We have dispatcher, we have a staging operator, we have agent, we have uh, locals, we have a yard master, all kinds of jobs that we bid on. To play the game. Mm -hmm. We have trains that originate in Salt Lake, Denver, uh, or Casper, or from East Yard. We have the locals are out here. We have the Clinker, which is a uh, runs our coal mines. So the switch lists here, notice that there's two of them, like the one at the far right, that don't list any cars to pick up or deliver. These are through trains that just go from Salt Lake to Denver or Denver to Salt Lake, and they mm. just run all the way across the whole railroad. Interesting. And this is how that's done. This is the staging yard. It's in a separate room, and these trains originate and end up here. Uh, one set of tracks representing Salt Lake and one set of tracks representing Denver mm. and passenger trains and unit trains. Ooh, this is Lee's new throttle system. He just installed it. It's all wireless now. Crazy, uh, wow. We're going to look at that a little closer on Wednesday. One of the most unusual features on Lee's Railroad is this piece of equipment. Wow, look at that. Isn't it interesting? This is how railroads used to operate for like a hundred years. Mm. This is how trains were run, at least when they were on the main line. Wow. This particular machine was a part of the Union Pacific out of Pocatello, Idaho. Uh, mainly the frame. 
Uh, I was able to pick up a number of these uh, from a friend up there years ago. And uh, my good friend in uh, Oregon, Rod Loader, at the time was refurbing these old machines and he put this one together for us. Uh, this one we've had in since 99, 1999. Uh, before that we had a machine that was part of the SP out of Eugene, Oregon. We ran that one for uh, about 10 years and then uh, uh, we had a buyer for that piece of hardware, believe it or not. And uh, from that we were able to upgrade to this one or change to this one. So everything on here is original, although the track plan is my track plan, uh, but the levers, the lamps, the plates, and everything are all original uh, to the old machine. I take it back. The plates we've had made, those are custom to us, but the levers, the lamps, everything else is, is old original hardware that was made, you know, way back when. Uh, the, this is a US and S machine. Uh, I think they were in Pennsylvania somewhere, I can't remember exactly where, but they made all these things back in those days and there were hundreds and hundreds of these across the railroads in America. And uh, we've tried to replicate as close as we can to, to the prototype. You can hear in the background, if, if the camera will pick it up, uh, you can hear the relays clicking in the back. So we've simulated some of the sounds that uh, you could hear back in the old days. Uh, I don't think there's any of these running. Uh, and I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think most of them are all gone now. So those old relay sounds are, you know, part of history here. And it's kind of fun to hear that, although we do have a cutout so you can cut the noise out if you want. And here is how the dispatcher uh, generally communicates back to the trains or with these signals. Oh, wow, look at that. When they get the track properly aligned, the train sees a green signal, meaning you're clear to proceed. And then the moving train changes the signal back to red, and the dispatcher can see the train is moving. Wow. So we're going to start here in the staging yard. The mole operator is going to put together a unit coal train and turn that over to Mike. And then Mike's going to take it all the way to Denver. And then the mole operator waits for the dispatcher. Mike is waiting for a signal at this point, And I need to set the signal for a right hand move. Okay, so what, what Mike did over here for us as the staging, he pushed and turned this for an eastbound move which then flashed in there. We put ours in correspondence with him, pushing and turning, and now the eastbound light comes on solid, which means that it's been acknowledged by the dispatcher. He still has to wait for a signal right here to, to proceed. And we lined up the signal, and he ha now has a green signal that he can leave and proceed onto the railroad. It's 754 dispatch. We're ready on your command here with the lights. Thank you. Around the railroad, so just hang tight. All right. Once the dispatcher aligns the tracks, he will get a green signal here on the semaphore indicating that he's clear to go. To activate that process, you have to hit the code button. So you can do anything you want with the levers. Once you get everything set up, hopefully the way you want it, then you send out the code by pushing the code button. And if we've done our homework, that should give him a signal right here. As soon as Mike starts to move and his train enters the block, the signal drops back to red and that corresponds on the dispatcher's control panel and the dispatcher now knows that the train is in motion. That is amazing. And the red semaphore indicates to any other train, don't come in here, there's a train in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna run into it. Oh yay. <laughs> Both ends of the block will light up red to warn other trains. Now he has a signal in front of him right here, and we haven't set that yet, so we need to go in and set that signal, or he'll come to a halt. Okay, so we set this signal right now, and we need to keep going in front of him. And let's do this, we'll take him through the siding over here. So we'll set this signal right here. 
in here, twelve R, and then we'll set fourteen R. Here. Now you can set up several routes at the same time here. I'm just doing one at a time to mm -hmm. keep everything going. And so now we're coming over here. You can see these are all red stop signals. So we need to set these as he travels around the railroad here. So in theory, Mike is going to see nothing but green signals in front of himself and he can proceed down the railroad. If for some reason he needs to stop, he will see a red indicator. This is set for the siding right now. We'll take it through on the main. And so when I push this, go button, it will set this back and set this at the same time. So far, Mike's had a cakewalk. He's had a completely <laughs> free railroad in front of him, all green blocks. All engineers hope for all green blocks, and they can just keep right on going. There you go. So Mike is still progressing over here. You can see that. You also notice up here that we've got the direction lamps are set, so we know that up to this point, everything is an eastbound move. Obviously, if you're going the opposite way, it would be a westbound move. So pretty soon here, Mike's going to run into his first red block, meaning that there's a train coming from the other direction, and he's going to have to stay there until the other train gets around him, and then he can move back out onto the main line and continue on to Denver. It's a beautiful railroad. I love the backdrop. It's, everything here is so cool. It's been progressing for 50 years and getting better and better and better and better. So we'll take this train that far and we'll have him come to a stop right here. Now to do that, a lot of times you'll set a route that far and let's say we have somebody coming on a westbound move over here and we want to make meat over here, then we would hold him here, we would bring him in here and make a meat right here. Eventually, Mike finds himself here at the other end of the railroad, effectively arriving Denver. Oh. Or at least leaving the modeled section on his way to Denver, and the train will enter the staging yard and vanish off of the railroad, again effectively arriving Denver. Neat. So a train like this one, just a unit train, it just goes around the railroad, meeting other trains and so on, correct? There's no switching involved, just meets. So a majority of the trains, however, aren't these through trains. They're little local trains that are running around, picking up and setting out cars at industries. So here's the pole list. We'll go out and pull these cars. And then how he's doing a pole, the, the cars that are going to be switched out are assembled in East Yard. And so how he's doing this, East Yard will be preparing this train and he'll bring these over to East Yard and set them out and then he'll pick up these cars and take them back and do his, uh, do his spots and then uh, he's finished for the day. This is his pull list right here. And then the spot list is hanging right there, which I'll work on how he's doing his thing. My face hearing aids turned down, he can't hear what's going on. So what he's going to do, I, I assume you've got to pick up here, Mike. As Mike goes around, notice that some of the cars, like this lumber, are behind the locomotive. Some of the switches are facing the locomotive, like this green box car. So when you pick those up, they end up in front of your locomotive. Now all of these switches are being controlled manually with little ground throws. This is because in the local yards uh, they wouldn't be controlled by the dispatcher. The train crews would be climbing down off the engine or out of the caboose and throwing the switches. Usually not with a ground throw but with a regular switch stand. But those are very difficult to operate in a scale size so Lee's using these little ground throws to simulate something that the crew can actually run. That's amazing. Now interestingly, Lee is converting the whole railroad over to operating switch stands right now. He's developed an operating scale HO switch stand and we're going to look at that on Wednesday too. And he's hoping to sell some of these things to people.
So anyway, as uh, Mike's going around, his train doesn't really look like a train right now. It's got cars in front of the engine and cars behind the engine. This is what happens when you're switching. Eventually, you've got to turn it into a train with the locomotive at the front. Okay, now we got to get this car with these cars, so we have to do what's called a runaround. That'll do. Can we hit? We'll break the train right here. A little farther, Mike. Yeah, so I can get in there, that'll do. Okay, then he'll come back. So the little boxcar is going to have to be taken out onto the main line where there's a passing track and the locomotive can run around it. Periodically these trains have to go out onto the main line. I mean eventually they got to go somewhere exactly. and that's going to you know, require going on the main line and that requires some really unusual switching rules. This switch stand right here, notice it's got these little silver boxes mounted to it. It's an electrically locked switch stand, so the dispatcher can lock that up so the train crew cannot throw it because they're going out onto the main line. It could cause a, big a little crash. bit of a wreck. <laughs> so that's simulated here with this electrically locked hand operated switch. Now there's another kind of switch that can be controlled by both the dispatcher or the ground crew. This sort of switch can be manually thrown when the dispatcher releases it to the train crew. It's called a dual control power switch. Now operating either of those types of switches means getting something called track and time from the dispatcher. Track and time means you have permission to take everything in hand throw or occupy the the main line for a given period of time, 20 minutes, an hour, and after that time you better be in the clear. Now operating either of those type of switches actually requires unlocking them. There's a little key next to the control and you have to insert the key in the lock and then unlock the switch stand. But now something that looks actually like a train is out on the main line heading further down to pick up some more cars at a different location. That's just cool. Isn't that cool? We so Mike's actually going to back his entire train into this uh, so yard lead down. here and off the main line, right and that will clear him from the main line. And he's actually going to proceed to pick up some sugar here at the <laughs> sugar beet plant. Oh, I wow. love the sugar beet plant. It's a beautiful, beautiful model. And wow. they were a big thing here in Utah. Yeah, no kidding. First he's got to dump his caboose somewhere, <laughs> and then he can back his train down onto the hopper full of sugar. That'll do. So along with the loose sugar here, there's a couple of boxcars full of packaged sugar. Oh, look at the little forklift. Isn't that neat? Anyway, let's pick up the rest of our sugar here at the sugar mill and head on out uh, into the main line again. So cool. So they're actually getting quite a train build up here. And now they're going to haul the whole thing down to the east yard where the empty cars are to be picked up and brought back to all these industries. Now somebody else has the job of running the east yard and while all this has been going on they've been pulling out all of the empties that are going back to all of those industries and those will be delivered over to Mike when he brings his loaded cars here to the yard and the next time they meet they'll reverse the whole process and do it all over again. Oh, sounds fun though. It is a lot of fun. It's taken a while to get all this uh down uh you know many years of practice and and changing trains around and whatnot and that's the fun of it for me is developing all these traffic plans operations on lee's railroad are just you it's know and realistic. it's realistic one thing about it now that i've really come to understand it it's really no different than operation on anybody else's railroad 
where they use the waybills and so on. Right. It's just that the waybills have been substituted with the switch lists because on a real railroad, they don't use the little waybill cards. I can just see getting up into the cab of some big <laughs> SD and the guys in there with these little cards. The little cards. No, they've got a, a switch list. And that's really all he's done is he's gone to the actual switch lists and, and they still use the waybills, but they use the waybills in the back office uh -huh. to generate the switch lists. Um, so it's, it's the same, but completely different. Yeah. And it really isn't all that confusing once you start to do it. In fact, I think it's way less confusing yeah, when you really I, start doing it. You just have your switch list yeah, and, and you say, okay, this car, I'm going to pick up these cars. Now I'm going to deliver those cars over to here. And it's just printed all out on a, on a list. And that makes figuring out your strategy for how you're going to build up your train and move it around and so on, I think simpler. And certainly more realistic. So that's all very cool. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, you do want to get over to the channel sure. and you want to subscribe because we are cool. <laughs> well, at least our channel is cool. I don't know about us sometimes. We're, we're riding in a convertible. We're, we're, sitting, we're sitting around the house yeah. and, and I'm in hair curlers and it's just a, anyway, you know, we, we, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we are boring, but we try to not be boring on the channel. Yeah. So uh, the, the channel is cool and the show is cool. And yeah. so you want to be a subscriber to the channel and to the show. And you can do that by be, by switching, by clicking. Switching, I got clicking. switch lists on the brain oh, here. Yeah, you can switch. <laughs> clicking on the blue button. We could shape it like a switch stand. No, we can't because it's, it's fixed. It's the blue button right in here. We'll be popping in in three, two, one, zoink, blue button says subscribe that takes you to the channel if you're not a subscriber it also makes you a subscriber well we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet we hope you didn't find it boring and we will see you here again in one week with some more massive and significant screwing around see you then bye bye, bye.